Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, how are you people? Hi. I had to pop in and tell you something. I think it's something that's very important. So <laughs> I hope that you, you uh, find it just as important. How are you? How are you? Tell me how you're doing. I hope that most of you are, have been vaccinated by now because if you're under 18, you shouldn't be on this platform. Just saying. <laughs> Good morning. Morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you? How are you? I am... I am so tired. <laughs> I am so tired. <laughs> I am literally so tired. Um, I was saying to, to my friend Lillian yesterday that, yeah, I am really, actually, honestly, I'm tired and often feeling overwhelmed. Um, my, my husband has been traveling in and out for the last three weeks, uh, which means that I have to pretty much be the person that looks after the household entirely by myself. Um, of course, I have my housekeeper, which really helps as, a, as, as backup support. Uh, but, you know, m my entire support system is, is not around. Um, Catherine sadly lost her father, so she's not around to help me with anything around. Uh, even, even in the office, because I work with her, um, she and another uh, lady, um, one lady is on maternity leave, Catherine is not around. I'm also kind of like, you know, short-staffed um, for some critical roles um that i'm busy hiring for but i had to kind of pull back on those roles and not hire for a while just to you know preserve cash flow and um, if you know anything in if running business is about is about cash flow um and and you know so i have picked up quite a lot of things myself um which which uh everything combined <laughs> Plus, I'm running a project for a very special client of mine, and I am doing all of the running around. Uh, running around. Don't worry, I'm I'm charging. <laughs> it's not free, but I'm feeling like yo, everything is just too much. Yes. Hello from Namibia, from England, from Australia. I see you. I see you. Hello. So yeah, I I am um, I have been feeling rather overwhelmed, but I must tell you about a trip I took yesterday. Yesterday I went to see my gynae because that's what we should do, guys. Please, <laughs> please, ladies. <laughs> so I had um, I went to see my gynae for what you know uh, uh, the routine annual checks and things. If you know anything about me and you've read Baked in Pain, you know I've had a few cancer scares. Um, so I'm very, I'm very vigilant about, you know, my, my screenings. The only time I didn't do it was last year. Because, well, I mean, I don't know who did what last year. I, I didn't want to see myself going anywhere near a clinic. Um, or, 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 because my, my guy is based out of, in a hospital. So I didn't, I... Are all gynes based in hospitals? Wait a minute. Hey, I don't know if that's a thing. <laughs> but uh, she's been my gynae for 15 years. Um, and anyway, so I went in yesterday, routine checks and stuff. Okay, things, the gynae appointments, nothing is ever routine. And, and you walk in, you walk out. No, <laughs> there's always something. <laughs> but yesterday, she says to me, um oh amanda and by the way we were talking about a, 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 a something i need to do um and and okay i'll tell you since i do overshare i had gone to replace my mirena <laughs> my mirena is an iud and my I have had my mirena since my son was one i put in the mirena mirena sits in there for five years then i went to i would I went back um so i've been on the mirena for 10 years and so I went in to replace it uh, again this time around. Um, and I, I love I love the Mirena because it's it's contraceptive that you don't have to take in every day. You don't have to think about it every day. It's just there. Um, and it's also got some nice side effects. I don't get the girly stuff. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I haven't for 10 years. <laughs> but also, I mean, I'm done having children. So, so this was the perfect solution for me. Anyway, so yesterday I went in to take it out and replace it. And, and we've now had this, this complication uh, with, with a fibroid that now suddenly grew in the last... I mean, my last, last screening was 2018, 2019. So, <laughs> and then this fibroid is kind of like complicating things. So she can't place this, this Mirena. So I said to her, okay, so, because I mean, I, I've got friends who've had to go in for like major surgery, not major, but routine surgery to deal with the fibroids. Because I mean, they literally practically die from the pain and, 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 um, and you know, so I was like, oh, okay, fibroids, what, what are they? <laughs> Why is it there? <laughs> so in her options of how to deal with this situation, she mentions that, you know, um, I've got a few options. They can do a, a, a process of embol embolizing, I think, embolizing the, the fibroid. And um, then it will just kind of, you can't get rid of it. But I mean, it's not cancerous or anything. It's just... It grows. It's just there. This thing. <laughs> I'm like, what is your purpose exactly, dear fibroid? <laughs> so I've never had issues. I've never had any kind of pain or anything like that. Um, but then she says to me, uh, whilst if I decide to go with the option of uh, wanting to embolize it, um, they're gonna have to. I mean, for the six months. Um, I, I, I will have to, to, um, go on appeal. Um, and, and yet it says she removed her fibroid. It was the size of a tennis ball. Yeah. Mine is only 3.8 centimeters. So how, how big is that? That's, that's quite three point. Yeah. I think it's about that big. Um, but but anyway, listen. I've had multiple dramas with any any of these things. But uh, I write about that in Baked in Pain, available at amandadambuza.com. <laughs> if you're out of South Africa, Amazon.com. So I said there, and then she, you know we're talking through the through the options, and then she says to me, "Oh yeah, no, you can be on a pill and stuff." And and I was like, "Oh," I suddenly felt like a teenager. To be honest, I was like. Okay, when I say teenager, I mean like 19 and above when you start taking pills. I don't know when, when people do that these days. Um, but I was just like, oh, <laughs> I must take pills. I must go back on Yasmin. Um, and, and I was like, okay. I suddenly felt like I'm a teenager all over again. And then suddenly she says to me, oh, but Amanda... This would have been your last Mirena anyway, um, because you in in within the next five years you'll be premenopausal. So in that moment, I think I blacked out, like I literally zoned out. Um, I just stared at her, and then she was like, "Amanda, you're 43 years old." And then I was like, "Oh, yeah." <laughs> I am 43 years old and within the next five years I'll be premenopausal. I was like, well, I have never had to face my mortality like that. <laughs> it felt like she was talking to somebody else. <laughs> I was just like, literally, I zoned out. I'm like, she's not talking to me, clearly. Premenopausal me. I was just like, that's for old people. Old people get premenopausal. <laughs> I'm not old. <laughs> She's like, Amanda, you are 43 years old. And I was like, ah, ah, that's, that's it. I have never felt 43. I, have, I don't act 43. <laughs> I don't feel 43. My thoughts are not 43 year old person. I my thoughts guys are so young, juvenile. I'm like out there. <laughs> and there she is telling me I will be premenopausal within the next five years. I'm just like, who are you talking about? 
because that sounds so old people who go on menopause are old people <laughs> I know. I absolutely like. I, I didn't get it. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's what my gynae told me. Um, I wish they can give you such a reality check. I was just like, yeah, okay, it makes sense why this engine keeps needing so much work. <laughs> I, the engine is overly used. It's tired. It's like. Ah. I did an entire calibration, the calibrator <laughs> replaced. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, thank you guys. Um, I must say it was uh, it was a really good laugh. <laughs> I got a good laugh. <laughs> I know you just don't feel you don't feel like your age. Like, okay, at least I don't feel like my age because I don't even act 43. I remember growing up seeing 40 something people, 40, you were old and they acted old. They're like these aunties walking around acting old. <laughs> I, was, I was just like, no, premenopausal, she's not talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> she actually I think she realized that it had never occurred to me that I have to like th think about being premenopausal or, or even menopausal <laughs> I think she was just like because she could see that I literally like I had there was a disconnect between my brain and my ears and what she was saying um and I was just like, oh, 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 oh wow. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I got that out of the way. But one of the things that she also said, which I wanted to actually talk about today as well, is that, um, you know, she says one of the things that they've started to see now um, at the back of this COVID uh, uh, period is, is, the, is the fact that, uh, there's more there's more um late stage cancer diagnosis so there's more late late stage cancer diagnosis because people have neglected their screenings um and i mean you've neglected it for one reason or or, or, or another whatever that is but she's saying in fact she was even saying one of the big medical aid uh, companies issued a a report um that uh, the oncology department has been has been uh, well wrote, and and unfortunately, um, you know whether there's COVID or not, we we still have to get our screenings done because when you are and, and and think about it, if you haven't had your screening, let's say since 2019 or, or whenever, because. We can all just remember that 2020 was just a week in our lives because <laughs> we don't know where it went but it's it's a if you haven't had your screenings then and you have a cancer cancer quickly grows and it, it, it also depends on the kind of cancer quickly grows so by the time you go for for what by the time you already have symptoms or, or are starting to feel sick or you go to, for your screening screening it's it's already you know um quite progressed so so i want to plead and beg you to please get your screenings done um i'm 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 i've been quite vigilant in in my life over doing my screenings you know, pap smear every, it's not comfortable guys but it's it can save your life um but okay i won't say any more about it but <laughs> i think <laughs> I think uh, if you are used to big people's playtime, you should be fine getting a pep smear. <laughs> 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 so please get your, your pep smears done. And um, also your mammograms. If you're over 40, you have got to have your mammogram. So I've scheduled mine for tomorrow. Um, 
but but you know it's it's so important that we we take care of our health unfortunately covid didn't arrive and all the other illnesses chilled and said i okay we're gonna go on vacation whilst you ramp the place up and um, whilst you run rampant or, or rampant all over they didn't they didn't you know they they're not on holiday <laughs> they they are still here so we have got to be vigilant around our health i am vigilant i have been for 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 as long as i remember because i don't really have family history so i don't know um my husband my, my father's side and i don't even know their medical history my mom was an only child she's the only connection i have to that lineage or that side of the family because even that doesn't uh, exist i mean I'm, i recently met her cousin and i say recently i was 37 years old so it's a couple of years ago um so so i don't really have like family history or family people i can go to talk to and say okay so what's our medical situation um so everything i've had to do proactively so i've had to do the screenings and I can assure you, I mean, the things I've, I discovered uh, through the screening processes, um, it, it could have been, it could have been worse uh, had I not been, been doing uh, the screening. So, yeah, <laughs> that's what happened to me yesterday. Sam says, uh, me too, my mom died of cancer, my gran and my grandfather, so I'm so strict with my yearly screenings. Yeah, I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, it's it's strange because, you know, it, it's almost like health-wise you're flying in blind when you don't know what what you could have inherited. Um, so, so yeah, we, we really have to have to remain vigilant about it. Um, and I can tell you, we can't fight any of these fights that we, any of these battles that we have ahead of us or that we deal with every day. If our health is not in, 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 in good in good condition or good order. Um, so yesterday I didn't only get a dose of reality, which is I'm growing older. By the way, which doesn't bother me in, 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 in any shape or form because I have always wanted to be older. My dream as a child was to grow older for reasons I, I write about in Bait and Pain. So... This concept of gr growing older is not something that I freak out at. Um, I mean, if y your body starts to do whatever it starts to do, there's plenty options out, out there to deal with it. You know, We're, we've got far more far more um, access to information. I mean, you don't even have to go to gym to be healthy. You can just get on the road and run. You know, you can skip. You can do all sorts of things. Um, so, so it's 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 so important that we don't lose sight of all of our screenings because we are we have our hands full with COVID, and it's easy to think that that's the primary thing we're dealing with now. But the truth is that you could be you could be dealing with a cancer that is going to grow so quickly. But had you just screened, um, it may have been caught early in time because. Some, uh, some cancers are treatable, so we have got to be able to, to be vigilant about, about that. So yeah, that's, that's, um, that's, that's been my, my, my yesterday, that was my day. <laughs> that was my day. I phoned my husband afterwards. Well, firstly, I spoke to Lillian about I sent Lillian lots of voice notes. I'm like, can you believe this guy needs talking to me about menopause? <laughs> She killed herself laughing. <laughs> Just like Amanda. Yeah, you are 43. Um, so, so, but also, <laughs> I, I, I've just had like, it's just, it's just one of those times when you, when you think, and, and I must be honest, even this morning I was, I was thinking this to myself. I say, you know, I, I have, I have, I have changed. I have changed. Um, and and it must be some of these experiences that that I've I've gone through this this period. I mean, having to 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 help my husband back nurse him back to good health, um, having to help nurse my friend Lillian back to good health, and and I somehow I, I feel like, um, you know, I handled 
my husband's situation fine and then I dealt with the residual you know pain around it and then when Lillian got ill um I think it's just like all these emotional things started to 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 flare up where I was like oh my gosh you know and and I must be honest I I really did get scared um when she was very ill but I think what, what, what was probably the difference between the two is that I was here looking after my husband day in, day out. So the months that he was sick, I was here doing it. So I could see, you know, and I was, I was, I was in charge of what his, his routine was in the day. So even, you know, just pushing him to eat something, you know, go sit outside, get some air, you know, get him a suicide in to just look after him and, and, and help with the bodily fatigue. So I was here, I, I, I experienced it all and, and I could see, you know, okay, now this is happening to him, okay, let me do this. Um, whereas with Lillian, I couldn't be there every single day at her house and, and look after her uh, uh, like that so I think in a way that that did that did um, get to me uh, but I'm grateful that she's still around and she's recovering well um, but but at the back of all of these experiences and and I wonder I mean I wonder um, if you if you if you um, also have experienced the same thing where you just feel like you're not the same anymore um, it feels like and and, and I, I always appreciate growth you know i appreciate change um and and i'm, I'm finding myself in that zone uh, in that zone of change um sam says i need to model my hands i used to be a hand model love oh you haven't read baked in pain yeah i used to be a hand model that's one of the ways i got myself through university <laughs> i was a, a hand model my my hands were super models <laughs> I, I'll tell you a little bit. I went to, to one of these big agencies. In fact, it's called G3. I don't know if they still exist. Um, and I wanted to, you know, be a model. Do, I don't know if I wanted to be a model. I just wanted to earn extra income somehow. And I had the bods. <laughs> I had the bods, babe. And and I went there and I enrolled myself. Um. And then I said, okay, uh, well, when I went there, they then started taking measurements. Okay, body was fine. They wanted, you know, this modeling agency, their idea of what beauty is. Thank God that has evolved. But anyway, so waist-wise, fine, everything. And then height, they're like, uh, a bit. Because <laughs> I'm 169, 169. So they're like, Ish, you just missed it by just, just. And then the, the, the scout there says to me, oh, wait, let me see your hands. And she starts looking. It's like, I'm sending you for a casting tomorrow morning. Go for a casting. The next thing I had jobs, first job was KFC. You know, when you pick up Igoj, eh, that guy. That <laughs> That's just to be my hand, <laughs> but oh Jesus, I couldn't stand my KFC after that for a long time because you are shooting the whole day and they're cooking this thing, you are immersed in the oil every single day. But yeah, that was just one of the things I did. I did the non yogurt, I did, yeah, I did a lot of hand, hand jobs. Um, I mean, hand modeling, okay, hand modeling jobs and um, <laughs> uh -uh, you can't be muting your lecture to listen to me <laughs> that's a bit irresponsible <laughs> yeah so anyway uh, what i was saying is that I don't, I don't know if you've also experienced the same thing um but but i've i've, I've kind of I've, I'm, I'm i'm finding myself in a reflective mode I'm, I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm hectically busy. I am doing so many things, as I said, when I started this live, but I am, <laughs> hi guys, <laughs> not hand jobs, hand modeling jobs. <laughs> okay, moving along.
along swiftly. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah um but what i what i'm finding is i mean i'll go on linkedin and and i read through you know what's there um and i'm just like yo this is boring like i have i have this loss of interest in in things um and i'm sure i'm gonna have to see see someone soon <laughs> Stop it, guys. <laughs> Trying to focus. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to see, see someone soon to talk through um, my evolution because I feel like I'm evolving. And and I uh, I, I hope that you, you are also... Um, you are also... You know finding yourself in that in that spot and and the beauty of it is that we mustn't resist change if 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 you you are in that and the real mountain woman says yeah i have lost interest too yeah like i'm not interested in any of it people are posting their achievements they're posting their new jobs they're posting these you know amazing things for them but i'm just like yeah i'm so not interested <laughs> I don't know. I was like not interested at all. I'm not interested in much, to be honest. But one of the things I did say when we, when we hit, co when we were, when we hit um, this this period, I said, you know, it's gonna present us with so many opportunities, but it's also gonna present us with some scary options because, you know, what you may have liked before. Is something that you won't like anymore because we are different people we are we have changed we have to change it's not possible to go through such actually i don't even think that there there are words that can that can um that can describe what we've had to go through um and and i think that you know it's 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 um it, it's it, it it's been such a, a, a traumatic a, a period um to the mind to the emotions to the soul to our bodies to to our minds largely you know um and and but but i'm that person that that i i really love to to allow myself the evolution so i take it as um i take it as an opportunity to grow and i i'm I, i'm actually taking it as as an opportunity that I am growing, you know. Uh, so let me read some of these comments. Uh, it do babe says, who do you actually speak to about evolution? No, so when I say I need to speak to someone, um, it's not about the fact that I feel like I'm evolving. No, that that's perfectly fine. I love that. Um, I have no issues with that. I think what I what I what I want to keep in check is my mental well-being in my state of mind having gone through um you know quite a quite a bit of um trauma in in watching my husband almost die and my bestie almost die you know all all in like a short uh, period of time so i think that they, they whilst i'm a i mean i'm i i handle my business but I, I think that they, there's a I don't want those those emo, those residual emotions um, to 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 start to start swaying me otherwise you know um, and and I think my I want I also want to keep my loss of interest in in check because you know it, it there's there could be many underlying reasons why you lose interest. Um, and and I guess it's just that conversation with someone that that is that is um, that that can just like you know help me navigate it. I may or may not see them. Depends on how I feel. But I always think all I need is a vacation. So I'm going on vacation next week. I'll see how I feel when I come back. <laughs> but I actually think as a as a matter of of fact and rule, we should see sick psychological uh, uh guidance and, and psychological 
recalibration, um, having, having gone through what we've gone through uh, and, and what we continue to go through, you know. Um, so, yeah, Ms. Raindrop says, I agree, so much has changed since COVID. Um, Amanda says, sometimes you grow, evolve so fast that your circle who knows you needs to get to know you again. This is, this is, um, in fact, I think that's, that's possibly the point I'm making is that the things we may have liked before, suddenly we don't like them. The, or, or we have we are indifferent to them or we're finding they no longer matter the people um that that we may have held so dear in our hearts and we've you know distance time and and trauma has kind of come in between and 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 also though in the same vein you start to realize that actually maybe you should lose some people right as friends um because you are no longer that same person and unfortunately people that are not evolving expect you to same stay the same person but you're, you're not the same person so pretty much the way that i i think is 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 um is what i'm going through i i, I imagine a lot of people go through that as well because I think it's such a great opportunity to recalibrate and 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 and, and embrace the evolution um, because I don't think that we can go through this much upheaval and remain the same. You know, I just don't know. I think one of the things that it has done for me clearly, which is something I've always known, but now I've gone to the other side, is is the fact that I know exactly what's important in my life. And, and over the years, maybe I may have also found myself in situations where I thought something was important or someone was important, but you soon realize that actually, no, you know, they're not with or without them, life carries on and there isn't a chunk of you missing. Um, so, so yeah, I think, and, and Lady Ronnie is a kind of necessary purging. I think it is necessary because I, I, listen, I, I, again, we, I look at things that I'm like hey, that doesn't interest me, but also some some of the things that that I I I um yeah it's it's just I'm 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 just revisiting a lot of things, a lot of people, a lot of um, beliefs, you know, and and I'm saying it's it's a great place to be because um I okay let me also let me also tell you the truth okay. I'm going to be truthful. My mother came to visit me. So. <laughs> For some people, that's an incredibly wonderful thing. For me, ish, it leaves me feeling. Oh, it leaves me feeling all kinds of things. So. I think I'm just like. But it's it's no it's no it's no it's no secret that I have serious issues. <laughs> Luckily, if there's one person on these IG streets that will tell it to you like it is, it's me about my state of mind. I have issues with Mama, but my Mama and Mama and I, you know, we have our issues. But it's it's um it's. <sighs> You know, I, I, yeah, thank you. I think there are people who understand what I'm saying without even having to say it. Um, and, and I think that I carry a lot uh, when it comes to, 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 to that. Um, I carry a lot when it comes to, to mother. You know, every time I, I tell people I'm very comfortable with, well, I've had to learn to be comfortable with a lot of triggers, but... Um, I realize that I'm comfortable with triggers, but when, when she shows up, little Amanda shows up and, and little Amanda, and I mean, I, I once spoke to a, a, a psychologist, um, and, and one of the things he said, he said to me was, um, you know, uh, 
He said to me, you need to stop expecting your mother to be your mother because she'll never be. Um, so when I say when mama shows up, no, Amanda shows up. I then have to, and, and I think this is why I just feel like so disinterested in a lot of things and just exhausted. <laughs> because ordinarily I can handle things, but I'm just like, like exhausted because mama shows up, low Amanda shows up. And low Amanda expects mama to be mama. But mama is, no, that's not going to happen. So then big Amanda has to step in and start mediating for little Amanda and start mediating for, for mother. So, but then, and, 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 and again, I mean, I've said my discomfort around talking about this, this particular subject because, you know, I'm, I'm still that person that, that I, I care about being a good daughter, but I also know that I can only be a good daughter in the best way I possibly know how in terms of um, what I've also had to, to, to receive as, as, you know, tools to enable me to be a good daughter. So, so it's, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's a, it's a strange one because after she, and you know, I always say, if you are with people and you walk away and you're feeling less about yourself or you're feeling some kind of funny way, those people don't belong in your life. Don't worry. I'm, I, 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 I take my own advice. <laughs> I take my own advice, but you know, some people just won't go away. <laughs> I'm laughing about it because it's it's one of the things I struggle with every day of my life. It's 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 my reality. Um, I appreciate the the love and support, um, but it's 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 um, we we all deal we all deal with something. You know, we all have something to deal with. A lot of people don't don't talk don't tell you about it. A lot of people struggle. They don't tell you about their struggles. So don't think because people are not saying they're struggling with something that they're not struggling. They just, some people just hide it well. And some people just want to be, they want to play the good card. So that means my, my, your mother abuses you or, on, or the only thing they're interested in is using you. And then you're like, no, let me not tell the world about that because I'm bringing shame to my mother or that I, I don't want to come across as a bad daughter. I mean, that's what other, other people go through. I have been very vocal about my struggles and and I think that the unfortunate thing or, or maybe fortunate it depends on 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 how you on how you look at it is that and guys believe me you you can't fill in gaps here because you don't know half the story so I'm just I'm just talking to you about some of the things that I've had to deal with this this last uh, 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 two weeks or so the the thing with it is that some people are so and and this is actually a point I was reflecting on a lot around you know, we talk about people, we talk about friends, we talk about the people in our lives that, that, that we, we kind of like, you know, revisiting the relationships that we have with them and what, what guides them. I think that some people are very comfortable with dysfunction. They don't actually know how to live in a functional world. There are so, dysfunction is so ingrained in them that they don't know how to be functional. They don't know how to be in functional relationships. Um, and and I've, seen, I've seen that, uh, you know, in, in friends as well, you know, in not just family members, but in friends as well. Um, and if, if you are a person that has purged yourself out of dysfunction, it is incredibly difficult to remain aligned with people. There's no al alignment, in fact, with people that, that thrive in dysfunction. And, and unfortunately, they bring the dysfunction to your house. Um, and, and, and I think this is where the energies start to like clash because my biggest challenge is having a relationship 
a dysfunctional relationship, a non-existent relationship that's one-sided, that's all about taking and having to live with that, you know, having to live with the fact that that is what I got. Me having to counsel little Amanda every day and say, this is what you got, baby. What you got is this. And every time it's a reminder, every time it's a reminder. Um, and, and, and again, you know, it's, it's not a, it's, it's not a bad talking badly about my mother or anything like that. I'm just telling you the things I have to deal with. <laughs> and unfortunately, um, it's, it's, a. Uh, it's it's draining to try to to up to to in fact i don't even i don't even think you know when you're just like <laughs> this is just it this is how it is you know and somebody said yeah they, they've had to 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 live with um you know we, we've had to they've had to to live with with the pain that mother represents um that's what I do. But but guys, the, the point is that it doesn't mean it's easy, you know? And it doesn't mean that I like it. It doesn't mean that it's something I, I, I would have chosen for myself. It's not. Because to at, at some universal level, I think it's incredibly unfair. And I think it's so unjust. But that's the card you're dealt with, you know? That's the card you're dealt with because... There's nothing else you can possibly do about it, you know. But distance is a good thing. Boundaries are a good thing. Um, and then you you know, I have those things where I'm like, okay, at least, okay, I'm going to go through this now, let's say for this Saturday. And then I'm going to have to deal with the aftermath of the, the, the emotion of it. And then... Okay, at least I'll have a breather for another year or so. You know, so so it's that it's that um, it's that constant thing, um, and and I'm pretty sure at some point in my life when when I've when I've found a way um, for it to to stop being painful, I'm pretty sure I'll talk a little more about it. But I think. Um, if you, I'm, I'm still talking from a place of, it's, it just, oh, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, I've worked on myself so much. I've built myself up to be here. Emotionally, I have rebuilt. You're like, listen, I've gone in, all in on myself. And then just one Saturday visit, you're like, ah. <laughs> You're like, I suck. <laughs> Why do I have to keep dealing with this? But you realize it's your reality. This is your reality. And you're just going to have to find a way to live with it. I think, though, for me, pain isn't about, you know, whether you have pain or you don't have pain and etc. It's about the fact that you don't allow it to control you or determine how you show up. Um, but I can tell you guys, if you don't have mama issues, you will not get a single thing I'm talking about. <laughs> because those with mama issues, I don't even have to say a single word. All I'll say is, yeah, you know, um, but then you also add this element of, or when I say about the universe, where... While some people thrive in dysfunction, there are also those people who don't even realize that they're dysfunctional. And that's the real issue. That's the real issue. It's the, it's seeing the dysfunction, but a person is like, everything is fine. They're not dysfunctional at all. No, it's not, it's not abnormal for distance and boundaries as your coping mechanism. In fact, I think it's the only way you can cope with it. Because there's a certain level of dealing with it when they're not in front of you. 
but then when they start calling and they just like they come then it's it's like it stirs it stirs you in the face so Kanyez says I literally have nightmares every time my mom calls me I have such ter terrible dreams on that night yeah I feel you completely I I get that reaction um, every time I see a call from her I and 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 it's yo it's your guys <laughs> <laughs> and I am trying hard to hold back the tears because wow 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 but you're just like okay this is what I have to deal with you know um, so yeah that's where I'm at I'm, whoo, I'm dealing with a lot oh wait there they are. <laughs> oh, I did say I was going to start a support group for all the people with mama issues. <laughs> because, yo, I, 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 it's a lot. It's a lot. Anyway, <laughs> it's a uh, you're just like yo i'm 43 years old i've just been told i'll soon be premenopausal yet i'm still dealing with mama issues <laughs> ah, you know what let's just live guys let's live our lives the best way we can leave them on our terms and yeah there's all this stuff that we we, we can't you just like okay that's just part of my life right so i choose to be joyful i choose happiness i choose joy every single day of my life because without that i don't know what else i have you know um i am blessed though here's here's the silver lining and to all those who have these issues who who suffer these these kinds of pain um what what actually gets me through it um with great difficulty of course but what gets me through it is the fact that you know what i have built my own family i am to my children what i would have loved you know and and i never have to i never have to doubt that they don't doubt that um I want nothing from my children except for them to prosper, to to remember me, of course, when I'm gone as, as that person that was there, as their mother. Now they say to me, to my children, I am home. And and I want that to to never ever go away. So in a way, I've got this 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 view of okay, dysfunction this side, but tell you what. I have been blessed with the opportunity to change the narrative. I have chosen to be there. I have chosen to stay. And there's been a lot of people who've been DMing me about these things, this particular conversation uh, about mama issues. And I deal with a lot of it offline um, because it's such a difficult thing to deal with. It's such a difficult thing to talk about. It's such a, it's just one of those things you just like, I okay <laughs> but I've done better I've changed the narrative I have changed I have changed my children's life for generations to come and you know if, if when you dig deep and you look into our mothers and listen there's some that are just born narcissistic period there's no trying to explain it away and linking it to how they grew up and etc. No, because I, I can make that same excuse. I couldn't be like, yeah, no, I didn't have, you know, um, I didn't have love, nurture or something. I don't, I don't know what it's like to be loved by a parent. I don't know it. I've never experienced it in my life. But I know 
what I would have loved for it to be. So I passed that on to my children. I gave that to my children. And I check in with them, just in case you think, you know, I, I like to drink my own Kool-Aid. <laughs> I check in with them and I say, you know, how am I doing? Um, and, 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 and I check in it's their state of mind. I see how they relate to me. I see how they, how they are just flourishing. And, and my children are one of those children who are just so vocal about their emotions, you know, how they feel about me or how they feel about their father. And I always say that I don't seek anybody's validation in life except my children. And, and to be honest, even within my children, there's, 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 a, there's a certain level. Boys will, will love their moms, even if snot is hanging out of your nose every day. <clears throat> to them, you are heaven. But then you have, oh my gosh, did you hear that? I talked about snot and then the next thing I'm like... <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but you have you have girl children who are who are going to be your biggest judges. They they are the girl children will judge you as a mother, and you know how well you are doing based on your children's judgment um, of 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 them. Uh, you know, it's. It's the one thing I, I always I always pray for that everything I do is adding to my children's rich life, um, and 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 you know it's it's adding doesn't take away from them because they're still gonna face life they're still gonna face challenges they're gonna go and mess up by themselves and you know where it is gonna happen but how have I enabled them to? to face those challenges um, and and you know it's it's a beautiful thing that I've been able to give them love because I really think a mother's love is is what warms you on those cold days I really think a mother's love is what guides you when you're lost um, and and the mother's life is 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 that voice you know that keeps saying to you you're good enough go for it just go for it. You are good enough. You are great. You deserve it. It's that voice long after we're gone. It's that voice of nurture. It's that voice of, of guidance, you know? Um, and, and, and yeah. So, so there is a level of, of universal disservice uh, unjustness so I'm going to throw in a few English words whether they're right or not it's fine some people from England will correct me <laughs> but you know there is a certain element of okay so I am actually the chosen one I'm the chosen one there was dysfunction in this entire line like but but for me, it's not just dysfunction on the mother's side. It's dysfunction on the father's side. And I was just like, how? So I'm the chosen one for, to, to break this generational cycle. And how many of us, though, are in that position where you are the chosen one to change it? You know? And have you actually saw, have you looked at it that way? Have you looked at it as I'm the one that's been chosen to change it? And I think there's a, a certain responsibility that comes with that, obviously. It's not pressure. I don't have any pressure to be a good mom. Not at all. Because, <laughs> frankly, <laughs> the standard is so low. <laughs> The standard is non-existent. So whatever I do, is, uh, <laughs> you know, so whatever I do is is uh, is already fantastic. 
just being here is like oh you're here because my reality of of parents is they're not there you know you grew up without them they're not there they chose not to be your parents so for me it's oh i've been here for my children since they were born yes i need it i deserve a trophy for that first and foremost and then everything else is just bonus <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I really think that in 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 everything we do, we 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 maybe should look at the dysfunction that we have come from, and probably dysfunction that we continuously find ourselves in, and um, and see what our role is in changing that narrative. The one thing I can assure you is that we have to change it. We have to change it. It's it's, it's a it's it's a non it's a, it's a non negotiable. We really must change it because surely our children deserve better. You know, our children deserve better. You know, I look at friends who have these wonderful relationships um, with their with their with their moms. You know, I, I even had like a friend of mine who's no longer here. She'd be like, "No, I'm going home every weekend. She'd drive to Hammond's Crow to be with her mother," and yeah, I'd be like, "Yo." <laughs> Where's a cactus? <laughs> Let me eat that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think Namsa says I envy those. I, I actually, to be honest, I used to... I don't know if envy for me is what I would use um, to describe what I feel towards them. It's something I've never had, so I, I, I'm like, I don't identify with it. I don't identify with it. But I can see how it's so special. I can see how the, my kids, <laughs> my kids, can, I can be that for them, you know? So... <laughs> Oh, guys, because I, it's true, and this is also the standard is very low to me. I can't believe I've been in my son's life since he was born. I truly deserve a trophy. It's it's true though that we take for granted how much we have already changed the generation generational issues that we we we've had to deal with, um, and and it's it's a every time you think you are not making progress in life. That's why I say, re reflect back on where you've come from. Reflect back on where you've come from. Believe me, the list of your worries will be who has done what at what age. You're going to be like, yes, yes, I need to kiss myself every day because wow, right? So we have conquered so much and we continue to conquer so much. Um, and, and, and most of what we have to conquer isn't just out there it's inside of us you know it's inside of us and there's one thing that i will tell you that little person in you doesn't go away we just grow these bodies these bodies that are now being told they are premenopausal <laughs> he's just like no i'm still dealing with little amanda i'm still trying to help little amanda now you dear guy you are telling me in five years I'm gonna be premenopausal anyway. And she's just like, where has like and for me that's such a that's such a true reflection of of time and what we use our time for, you know? And 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 I think you know when I was saying when I started this live and I was saying that's one of the things that that I'm 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 in just this this the swirl of emotion and reflection is the fact that one moment you're busy reparenting yourself and the next you you are heading towards the other side of your <laughs> of your life <laughs> so so I just think in the process which is what I do I just enjoy my life to the fullest and i you know one of the things i tell my children i'm like you know guys some days you you will you will 
you will you will you will you have pain and joy and heartache and happiness all in one day that is life it's not like one day it's just one long happy joy thing and then another day it's just sadness you have all these multiples of, of emotions at any given time and you just have to 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 learn how to navigate those contours of your life you know Madam Amoa Sifut says, I needed this. Uh, your younger self still longs for your mother. You still need her. What hurts the most is you needing a mother figure and she still doesn't get it. Yeah, I, <laughs> I that boat sailed. That ship sailed along. It never existed. It never actually even, even came to shore. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't at all. It never even you know when you look in the in the ocean and then there's that horizon? It was never there. <laughs> it was never there. Like, never there. At every single time, every single engagement, every single encounter is a reminder why that ship chose not to even come your direction. It didn't come. So I'm one of those people that had to, 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 to parent myself. Um... I had to, you know, reparent in, in fact. Um, but but this is life, guys. This is it. One moment you're crying, the next you're laughing, the next you're sad, the next you're not. That's life. It's not, it's not just... I never, ever, ever want my children to think that there's only one way of living. You know, this is, this is it, you know. Um, I, I think that uh, Sophie Mabena says I, I cannot relate to a mommy issue, but this helps me to appreciate my mom even more. She's a single mom who did her best to raise us, even though she didn't have money. You know, I am, and, and, and there's actually quite a few of you that have been writing about, you know, what, what having a mom and, and the reflective thing around it has done for you. Um, by the way, I think that's actually how it's supposed to be. You know? I think that's how it's supposed to be. You you play big people's games. You give birth. You should look after the children. <laughs> Logically. If we generally just follow logic. <laughs> that's why, you know, some of these 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 not very nice people that, that uh, raised me or the yeah call them if you call it raising but they are who raised me you know when they're like yeah man they should be grateful we used to wipe her buttocks as a baby i'm like first of all uh yeah a baby can't wipe their own buttocks so <laughs> somebody had to do it but two i i don't need to be grateful tell my mother that my mother must be the grateful one yeah of course i'm grateful because i'm that human being I, i'm like oh thank you but my mother is the one you did a favor for her not me so like let's just <laughs> let's just be clear <laughs> and the truth is that i i i am um, like like some of these comments here having a single mom who didn't have money but she was there for you because Children don't need money, guys, from us. Let's just be clear. They start needing money when they're like teenagers growing up because then they want to buy stuff. I don't ever believe that children look at, at us as their mothers and think, your money. No, your baby wants your book to nurture them and you build that bond at that, at that moment. They know that if I'm hungry, my mother is going to give me the boob and I'm going to be nurtured and I'll be fine. Then I'll sleep. Then, you know, you name it. But, and that bond is built from that moment on. In that moment, no, they don't want money. The fact that you have money or you don't have money is your problem, not theirs. So we always think that our children need finances from us or yeah we know we need to be able to do to have that to provide for them but at the core of of it all if you had to ask any child that has childhood issues childhood issues like mine and maybe even if you don't have them i think if you had to ask the question 
as a child, what would you have liked the most? They put a pile of money here and they put your mother. It's a, non, it's a no brainer because we don't have a concept of money as children. We just want, so when, when, when the explanation for, for abandoning me is that I couldn't look after you, I had to go find work. I'm just like, well, why didn't you just take me and sleep with me under a bridge or something? Because for me, it's, I want my mother. I don't want even, but again, mom, the hat you're wearing as a mom, yes, you are thinking about your child. You are thinking about what are the things that you can provide them with. Um, but unfortunately, it's, it, it, some mothers hide behind that. I couldn't look after you, so I had to go. Um, I just think it's a cop out. Okay. I think that you, you, you can't keep using that as a reason to outsource parenting. I just think that whatever, I'm like, okay, so you, 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 you didn't have money. You came to work and then you got a job because now I'm in, now I'm smart, right? But I, I can do the, the, the maths, but little Amanda wants the answers. So I'm like, yeah, so you left to get a job, but then you started working at that doctor because I remember very well you started working there in 1980 blah 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 and then I'm like so why didn't you come back then because now you got the money <laughs> so the, the the truth is that it's 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 um it, it's not it's not about um what what and and there's some comments here that you know your daughters love money but and and I, I assume you're saying that tongue-in-cheek because whilst they may love what the money can buy they they want their mother you know they they don't care about they don't children don't have concept of money until a certain age as i said um and and yeah so jesus i said a lot today i was just popping in to tell you about screenings and that we must screen but now i ended up wow <laughs> i said so much uh, but actually, I feel good. I feel better. Eh, crying is uh, is the one uh, <laughs> natural order of things. So, guys, I just want you to know is that if if you see me living my life, my best life, hey, you must know the things I have to deal with. Aisha, I deserve the trophy every day. I deserve to be happy every day. I deserve it, deserve it, deserve it because wow, <laughs> wow, but I'm so thankful for my family that I've created. I'm so thankful that if there's one thing, and I said it, if there's one thing I know I've already, I got right already. So Mena, if today was the last time I'm living on earth, I just know that I am okay. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> Do you know what I've done? My children have had a mother all of their lives and a father. Whoa. <laughs> Two things I didn't have growing up. So, yeah. I mean, I've already done my, my things. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. I've already done it. And you have done it. You know you have done it. So instead of focusing on so many things that you haven't yet done, look how much you've already done, how much you've already achieved. It is, it's incredible what we, what we have to do um, every single day. So like you say, when I was saying maybe I should talk to someone, I think I actually now I feel better. I don't need to talk to anyone anymore. I just wanted to tell you guys about my mama issues. <laughs> I think at the core of my, you know, I'm just like, it's this, you know, and, and I'm grateful. Um, my mom is in good health. She doesn't go to bed hungry. Um, if there's one thing, I'm like, God, that has to take me straight into heaven. No more twine is true. Like, if you took that away from me, I'd be like, ah, <laughs> you know, fair. <laughs> You know, fair. I did everything you expected of me. But now, what? You know? 
which by the way i think heaven and hell are right here <laughs> let me just detour into that conversation <laughs> No, it's true. And um, Mulanska says having a parent doesn't mean you have a parent. One hundred percent. We all we all suffer from different variations of of abandonment. Some people have parents who are there, but physically there, but emotionally not available. So it's all we all have different uh, issues. Um, mine are just not not you know they're not like that. Um, and I can tell you if you told me. What, if you ask me what was my choice, I would have chosen to have a mother and a father. 100%. I would have. But some people who, who had them and didn't have the love or, or the attention will tell you otherwise. But ultimately, I don't know why you would wish you didn't have your parents. But, but I 100%. 100%. Madam Momo says, you're glowing, Amanda. Umko loves you. <laughs> Thank you. I actually did a, um, I don't know what it's called, so let me not even try, but Dr. Bongi at the wellness clinic, the wellness center in, in Morningside. I did a session, in fact, on Vasily Sage with Dr. Bongi. So I said to her, listen, it's time I graduated from my basic three step, but, but since I'm now 43 and I'm being reminded of many things that I didn't think about. <laughs> so, so I went and I had um, a, a facial. It's a medical facial. So I haven't done any of the advanced things. Yo, she wanted to do something where she injects multiple whatevers into my face and neck and inject the that terms that she uses. I told her, listen, you don't, I don't, I, I won't even remember. So just give me a glow. And yeah, so that's what she did. It's just a medical facial. And I'm, I'm, I'm advancing in my worries. So maybe in another couple of years, I'll start doing these advanced ones. But for now, I know, just stick to basic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, uh, Molash uh, says, oh, I see that question. Sorry, guys, I've just been talking nonstop. But that other question, Botox injections, no. Botox injections, not yet. Not yet. My, micro needling. Which, what's micro needling? Don't, don't laugh. I don't know. <laughs> but she didn't do my, micro needling, no. She just used the mask that, like, stings. And then it, it apparently like takes it takes off dead dead skins the top layer dead skins, um yeah she didn't do anything invasive or injection or no, it's just she just give take take off the the top layer, um so so yeah, um <laughs> thank you <laughs> so so you so you the question was how did how did I support when they were not there for me um well i i actually about my mother in particular she's my mother guys it's whether you whether like she's my mother she gave birth to me ultimately okay and imagine if i wasn't born you wouldn't be having such a good time with me now <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, there's something that that is there to honor God using her to bring me on this earth such that God can put me to to use. So that is it. So that's why I say whatever I do um it's it's not about because if you start thinking no she did this to me she continues to do this to me she doesn't deserve this that no they, then then I think there's a there's a there's a there's a significant problem. For me it's about it's just directly between me and God. Not, and she doesn't even feature in the conversation with me and God. So, yeah, you know what? It, it she aches. It, she, she brings me an ache. Um, she like the, those issues run so deep because we both are two people with we are we are two people with issues. Period. But there there is there is um, there is an understanding that. If my mother went to bed hungry, that would be a very bad reflection on me. 
not from other people but from god because i can do whatever i can withhold a uh, affection or do, do whatever but the one thing i don't think god would smile at is me letting her go to bed hungry i just i just i just don't think that's right you know um so so that's kind of like that's that's kind of where 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 I am. Um, sorry, guys, just doing this quickly. So, so yeah, <laughs> I've said a lot. Um, yeah, actually, that's that's a, that's great English. Nelly says um, we come through them, not from them. I like I like that English. That's the right English. <laughs> Hello, Lee. Finding you. Um. So, no, I don't. I, someone's asking me my, about my dad. No, I don't know. Hey, you know, he, I, I don't know him. He died. I I got to know last year that he died when I was thirty five, but I'd never met him. So, like, dude doesn't exist. Have I forgiven my mother? Of course. I wouldn't be this person if I hadn't forgiven. It's so pretty. Yes, it is. That is so nice. Um, one of my outfits has arrived. Come, Sli, say hello to the people. Say hello Morning, to the people. Morning, everyone. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Ashman, I'm shy. I'm not a live person like Amanda, but... Oh, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Can I just putting it on? Okay, no problem. So, so yeah, guys, I think, um, um, yeah, I think it's, it, you, you are saying that, uh, you it, get something to drink. Yeah, okay. Yeah, of course. And that fridge has stuff and that one okay. and the okay. other one. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Sliz's skin, do you see? They're saying your skin is amazing. Oh my goodness, guys, thank you so much. You must follow Sliz. She's, uh, Lindy, see Lindy Lim Kiza on IG. And yes. um, uh, this Lee Apparel. Yes. So she Aww. actually dressed me quite a bit for Vastly Sage, the talk show. Thank you so much, guys. I use products from the dermatology. Uh, are you not here to promote products? No, I'm doing work with this. <laughs> so that they must pay first. <laughs> losing my life to promote products <laughs> she is gorgeous hey, hey, hey. no <laughs> oh gosh three fridges you're coming hey i have an entourage of teenagers who eat endlessly uh, I didn't buy them out of choice, but I had to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're like they wanted. They wanted the plug. <laughs> no. <laughs> exactly. Follow Lindy and let her promote products on her live, not mine. <laughs> oh man, thank you so much, guys. But. Uh, yeah, it it was uh it, it it's a the, the point that I've made um in in this entire life is is that um we all struggle with something one way or the other whatever it is um and 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 it's not you know it's not um it's not it's not minuscule you know so never minimize your 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 pain um because you think, because you, you had a mom, then whatever struggles you may have had don't matter. No, 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 please. Uh, p your pain is your pain. That's one thing we can never transfer, compare, or judge. Whatever you need to, to, to overcome, you, you, you overcome. And I, I want to say, uh, you know, well done to the people who have had mothers who are wonderful role models in their lives. And, and 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 fathers who have been present in their lives and 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 enabled them you know with enabled them with with the tools um and 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 that 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 sense of i'm enough and and i'm 
I'm loved and and I deserve to be happy. I deserve great things. Amen. And if you now I have a cheerleader. Yeah. <laughs> things Lee needs to go. <laughs> But, 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 you know, the, 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 the other point is that um, I want to send big hugs and lots of love to those who didn't have, but have somehow found a way to break that cycle and, mm -hmm. and have been present for their children, have only want what's best for their children, and are willing to actually make the necessary sacrifices to... To, to make sure that their children don't have to battle the demons that we that they've been dealing with or, or, or battling. And the truth is that we don't, you know, I always hear parents, you know, your old school parents or even people my age saying things like, yeah, but our children need to know hardship. They need to know. No, why would you do that? Why would you want to inflict hardship on your children? The point is that our children will learn the lessons that we pass on to them and they will learn life lessons along the way too. So they don't have to experience hardship to become or to grow into decent human beings. And I really think we need to stop normalizing pain and abuse, thinking that that's what our children need. They don't need that. Why do, you, do we believe they deserve that? I, I don't think that I deserved it. I don't think you know, any of the children who, who have suffered deserved it. You, you, you will pa pass on the lessons that you need to pass on. We also have to be quite, quite situational as, 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 as parents because we don't, we don't know. I mean, I mean we, we, are, we are raising kids in, in, in a very different context. And we are raising kids um, that, that, are, that, that, that are actually, it, we just need to, recognize children as spiritual beings those are spiritual beings through which god speaks through which god continues his work so we don't we don't need to inflict trauma on them just so that they become strong and you know wonderful human beings who can know because a lot of them don't come back from that and a lot of them struggle all their lives from from that um and and you don't need pain to to be successful or to to build a great life or to find your purpose. You you don't need it. So let's normalize being wonderful parents. Let's normalize having children who are healthy, who are nurtured, who are self-assured, who, who who believe in themselves. Because I actually think that's how it should be. But <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Lee. <laughs> That, that is that is that is how it, it it should be it shouldn't be we we we've normalized trauma and abuse and hardship so much like like no if you haven't suffered you you, you are not you are not you, you haven't arrived in life no 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 i don't think suffering is a prerequisite at all in fact i think you you deserve sleep come and sanitize before you get near my children <laughs> <laughs> Mama Bear. <laughs> no, it's okay. I forgot. Yes. <laughs> so yes, you don't need pain to find purpose. You don't need um you don't even need trauma. It's it's unnecessary. Um it's not it, it's not necessary to become the person that you 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 want to become. So so I I just I just really think that we we, we must do better. Um, yeah, uh, someone just said about beating up your kids because you grew up getting hidings. Guys, I don't I don't understand why that is. Anyone touches my kid. <laughs> Hey, I am that person. I am that person. I had to find a balance with my husband of how we're going to discipline our kids. And it, it's not, you can't be beating your children up, guys. Come on, man. Yes, it, it's just, it's so illiterate. <laughs> Honestly, it is illiterate. And it's got nothing to do with book education. You need to know better. I said it, children are spiritual beings. 
if you imagined your children as spiritual beings that God sent on this earth to continue his work. I don't know what you believe in, but I'm just saying that's what I believe in. Spiritual beings. So you need to be treating them with love and nature because ultimately they're, they're the ones that are going to, 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 to carry your name forward, whatever, whatever that is, you know. Um, how do I instill discipline? I am yet to see children who are bitten up being disciplined. They just do things that you want them to do out of fear. It's not discipline. So again, our parenting styles are different, but they have to evolve. I talk to my children. I mean, yeah, when, when they were younger, you know, and you want them to associate consequence and action, I, 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 you know, the pamper, yeah. I do this on the pamper and, and it would make that, that, that like sound. But I don't beat my children up. Um, it's so not right, guys. It really is. Um, it's, it's just not, not right. Like, I don't even know why you do that. You need to, anyway, it's illegal now, so you need to go to jail if you do things like that. Talk to children. Children, you'll be surprised how much they actually understand talking. But remember, some parents want parenting overnight. They want the results of the parenting overnight. And I'm in not, no shape or form telling you I'm a better parent. No, I'm just telling you that I'm a great parent for my children because I have seen, we've found our rhythm. I have seen the evolution. I have seen the lessons that I've been imparting upon them since they were young come to fruition. So it's not a comparison of you're a bad mom, I'm a great mom. No, it, it's about the fact that we don't have to hang on to how things were with us, thinking that that's what works for our children. It's, it's, not, it's not correct. What, how we may have been raised is not how we should be raising our children. Times have changed. Things have changed. We have changed. And, and you'll be surprised how much children actually listen children will hear you yeah you have to repeat yourself a hundred times that is what being a parent is uh, if you go back to what i said you play people's games you're going to give birth to children which means you have to parent them that means every single day you may have to repeat yourself a million times before it, the lesson finally sticks so i believe that i'm, I'm a guide to my children i'm here to guide them to support them to show them what what is right and wrong and actually to show them how to determine what is right and wrong because ultimately they have to decide that by themselves uh, when they when they leave my nest in fact even at school now they have to decide for themselves what's right and wrong i'm not there so they must decide this is right and this is wrong and that's what i've been able to instill in my children so discipline isn't about I'm going to take a belt, I'm going to take imfubu or a cane, or I'm going to take, I mean, I come from that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I can tell you that the scars that thing leaves are not worthy of, of, unless of course you're an abusive parent, because then there's also that. You will hide behind, you want to discipline your children, but you, all you are is just abusive. So let's check ourselves please i i i i really 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 it breaks my heart when children are being beaten up no please and I, I beg of you don't do that and and ultimately you put in what is what is the right thing to do you feed them the values that you want to feed them and they will grow to become those human beings but now I'm not in any shape or form saying we all come from the same value set. No, we don't. Um, but I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just really asking that we revisit some of these things that we believe are things we should do because they were done to us. Um, because I don't know, did you enjoy getting bitten up? Hmm? Did you enjoy getting bitten up as a child to be disciplined? If you didn't enjoy it, why are you doing it to your children? You know, so we need to actually just lean into our children and talk to our children. I know, guys, it takes time. It's too much effort. There's so much to do between work, that, this, that, that. There's so much to do. 
this parenting thing, you'd rather just shove a screen in front of them and hope for the best. But those things, they come back to bite you in the long run. They really do come back to bite you in the long run. I, I, um, I don't know how or what world you know, started this, this concept of discipline equals to beatings or beatings equal to discipline. I really don't 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 subscribe to it and I'm incredibly sensitive towards it because I grew up I was I don't I didn't grow up getting hidings. I grew up being beaten to a pulp. And it didn't matter whether I had done something or hadn't done something. So I am incredibly sensitive to that. I'm incredibly sensitive to how people talk to my children. I'm incredibly sensitive to how they talk to their own children, to be honest. That's why I choose not to visit people's houses because I'm just like, I don't want to see your, your dysfunction. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> because just now I get involved because I'm one that, I'm that person that, that, that when it comes to a child, I can't say I'm not going to get involved. It's, it's, I actually feel like it's, it's our duty as a community to protect children, even from their own parents, especially from their own parents and their own homes because the abuse children don't walk out and get abused out there by it's very it's very rare that children walk out of their homes and get abused by strangers it is the same people that are inside the house who are entrusted by God to look after those children and they don't and they do they do they do um uh, uh, they, they in fact do the opposite of what i believe is 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 looking after um so we, we should be better. We should do better by our children. Discipline doesn't only come from, from beating children up. Have you tried talking to them? Have you tried actually realizing what your role is as a parent? Your role is to talk to them until the lesson drops, until they make the connection with the lesson, until they're like, oh, okay. And that might take years in fact but i just think we want the easy way out you know um i, I just think we we, we want uh, an easy way out and it's not okay so i'm glad that it is now it is illegal it's a crime to actually beat your children up and and i really hope that your children report you <laughs> if you beat them up <laughs> they have rights <laughs> And what's wrong with that? They must have rights. Look at the monsters around them. I mean, I'm talking from experience. So, so, but you, you think so many, you think that everything is fine with your children. You don't stop to look right under your nose in your own home to see what is happening, who is doing what to your children. And it doesn't mean you go around being a neurotic, mistrusting person. No, it just means you actually open your eyes, ears, and your soul and watch and listen to your children because when they're not okay they may not have the words to tell you that they're not okay but they sure act it you can see it so so um so those things i'm really sensitive to because of how i grew up um and and i'm yo listen when it comes to this just uh, how you're going to discipline kids for me i shame. there was a time when i actually made peace with the fact that I'm going to take my husband on. <laughs> I was just like, you know what? I am the mother. How I do it, of course, is, is, is what matters. So you talk and find a way between, because we all come, we both come from very different, you know, upbringing. Um, so you, you find your rhythm, you talk it out and say, listen, this doesn't work for me because of one, two, three. And then you, and and you find that 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 medium that is good for your children because ultimately it's not about you it's not about you the parent i must everything be about you it's about your children and in, in enabling them in, to 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 become the best the best human beings they possibly can um Amanda, so when this is amanda even shout people even shouting at your child and friend of visitors, how do you normalize screaming at each other as a family? I always cringe. Yeah, and then they become screamers and they throw things, and then everyone is like shocked how they could, how they became like that. 
and you're like oh remember what you did at home so and and kids learn more by observation than than they learn by what we say to them and and you know i i i i i just i'm just so conscious of of how i'm showing up for 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 them um and if there's one thing i want to be known for is is exactly that is how I changed the narrative such that my children find new things to deal with, not the same things I've had to deal with. Because I can't prove them from life, but I, 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 really, I really want them to know. And you know what's nice? The girls are 14, going 15 uh, early next year. My son is almost 11. For me, every day, every day, I'm like, I'm still here. <laughs> I've been here. You know, it's a point of celebration for me. It's quiet celebration. It's that moment of observation. There hasn't been a single moment of my life at any given time where I thought about other alternatives except to be here for my children. That's why I even left a wonderful corporate career. Um, I stepped down from chairing a bank because it was taking time away from my family. I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> I doubt that how I want to be remembered is how fantastic a chairperson of a bank was. I was that I left my children and family having dinner all by themselves and got on calls late at night. And you know, I don't, for me, I don't care for that. I don't care for stature. I don't care for status because I've achieved all of those things. And those things come from within. They come from my opinion of myself. So I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't care to be remembered for the things that uh, uh, at those things you know i don't care to be remembered for who oh, amanda won so many awards there's that no i just care that i was there for my children and uh, would i send them to boarding school no we've had that conversation my husband went to boarding school um and so for him it was natural that ah uh, you know the kids must go to boarding school i was like mm, nope it's not natural for me <laughs> so i was just like uh, I'm sorry, that's not going to happen because of how I grew up and my sole purpose in life is to be there for them, to prepare them to leave my house and become these wonderful human beings that I hope they will become. And, 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 and not because I'm, I'm, I'm hanging on to them, no, but for me it's, it's an opportunity to change the lives of many generations to come long after I'm gone. So if, if I have them go to boarding school, then, then I'm not parenting them, you know? Uh, and, and, and people send children to boarding school for many reasons. I'm just saying I, I don't have a need for it. And I talked to them and I say, if you ever decide you want to go to boarding school, you must please say, and then we can talk about it then. Um, but they have no eagerness to do that. They have no interest. The girls are in grade eight. Um, so, you know, and my husband, my son tells you flat out, I'm not going anyway. <laughs> and yeah, and there'll be time for them to leave the house. I mean, honestly, and um, I, I used to work with a guy who said to me, you know, I'm so into my family that I'm going to struggle when they leave the house. I'm like, no, that's because people who, who have those things, because they don't have other hobbies, they're not planning for the time they leave the house cause it to be a struggle why not i mean you miss them you miss the noise you miss the energy you miss all of that you miss you i think you miss most protecting them you know because once they leave your house they're out in the world and there's nothing more you can do to protect them but my husband and i plan for the day we leave our, our children leave we even talk to them about it it's such an open conversation Everything we're doing, we'll be like, okay, you know, this is, remember when you leave our house. <laughs> so, so we also make it, um, it's not this, this big thing that, oh my gosh, empty nest. And, you know, we talk about it, even my husband and I, we're like, it's so nice sometimes when we just like disappear and we go into a corner and chat and do, you know, um, no, not that, guys. I am just mean like we go sit somewhere and just talk by ourselves. And and we, we continuously have those moments where 
we like it, this is how it will be when 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 they're gone so so we we practice those for those moments um and and yeah so we've we've i've been i've been i've been blessed with with um a wonderful life so on the one hand i might be crying about my mama issues on the other hand i'm like glory be to god because i have changed this narrative i have changed it and and that's one thing no one can ever take away from me no one can ever take away from my from from my children um and it's it's a i am so grateful for the decisions that i made even a partner i must tell you before i go because i have to fit a dress uh you know when you're busy choosing you know fun partners please remember whoever you're choosing might just end up being the father of your children or the mother of your children but let me talk from a woman's perspective they might end up being the father of your children so when I, if you only think with one organ in that moment you have a problem <laughs> because you end up with someone that's probably really like you know, meet all these other desires that you have. But then, what kind of father are they going to be? Because you can raise, you, I mean, you can raise children by yourself if that's your reality. But the point is that if you have chosen someone to be part of your life, it's their children too. So they, they raise them just as much as, 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 you, as you raise them. So, so it is so important to think beyond that temporary moment. <laughs> it's very temporary. It's what are the long-term uh, 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 effects of your decisions. Because ultimately these things matter, and and I can talk here about you know what I've been able to do with my children, um, because I don't I don't tell my husband's story. My husband's story is not for me to tell, but the one thing I can one hundred percent assure you is how significant a part of my life he's been in enabling this vision that I have for my life, um, and without any doubt, I I believe that I am that to him as well. Yeah, of course I am. What do you mean? <laughs> Told you, premium stock. <laughs> you are moving to rest with your daughter. Oh my Lord Jesus. Learn to let go. Get a hobby. Neat or something. <laughs> but it does happen very quickly. Um but when I say quickly, I mean, I already told you about this conversation I had with my gynae yesterday. So it's like, it will happen. It's, it's, it's around the corner. Deal with it. Like, confront it so that it's not this big, oh my gosh, I'm going to die, then depression. No, I mean, I want my kids to leave my house and start living, you know, their own lives. Um, because then my, my job would have been done. It would have been done. Um, we we need to be very careful, especially us this this uh, middle class. You know, we've got we've got things we've got more things than our parents did. Um, so I think that we we need to be careful that we don't continuously spoon feed our children too much. I mean, there are children who are still thirty and staying home, children, or twenty four or twenty five. They, they they show no signs of doing anything with their lives <laughs> no parents we need to do bad so the fact that we have the means doesn't mean we're doing them any any uh, justice or service um just by you know keep keep funding them beyond the the years yeah if somebody's studying they're doing their masters or their phd or their honors or whatever you know whatever the circumstance is i'm i'm just saying that if they are not doing any of that, they they maybe should be going to find jobs somewhere. <laughs> Our my only promise to my children is that I they they never have to worry about me. I'm gonna look after myself. I don't need anything from them. The only thing I'll need from them is maybe a birthday gift, a Mother's Day gift. Yeah, that's it. 
Outside of that, nope. <laughs> I am not doing it. They don't have to worry about me. I've worked, I've sorted myself out. My money is my money, not theirs. <laughs> they must go make their own money. <laughs> That's why I've been teaching them now. You've got hands, you've got talent. Do, do, do something with them and make a living from it. My kids made lots of money selling their art uh, online. I sold it on Instagram here. So I'm teaching them how to use their own two hands um, because, yo, hi guys, no, it's, it's a, uh... <laughs> you guys, <laughs> let's revisit how we, we, and sometimes remember, if you're just hanging on to your children and you don't want them to go, you have serious issues, so you need to find out why you're struggling to let go. Because eventually we are gonna have to let them go. Uh, that's that's our job. That's when when you're like, okay, the bulk of my job has been done now. Uh, you literally, I think you you literally get front row seats to everything you've put into them and start to see it unfold. And my only wish is that when we are sitting on that front row, we we are proud of what we see, um, because it's often too late to to change it. The, the only opportunity to change anything and, and, and fix anything is when they're still here and young and they, they're still, you know, they can still take it in because eventually they're going to have to find their own way. So, yeah, thanks, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, <laughs> yeah, this was a lot of live. It was a lot of live. Um, it, I, I love the impromptu ones because then, you know, there's no agenda, there's no expectation. You know me, I like to go with the flow. So please do your screenings. Um, when you're over 40, you have to do your mammogram. Uh, uh, women, do your pep smears, please. And men, please do your prost prostate cancer screenings. Do whatever screening you need to do, guys, because some of these things can be treated early. Send your young children, girl children, get them vaccinated for HPV, because ultimately that is what will help them uh, prevent cervix cancer. And a lot of us didn't get that opportunity, so you're constantly having to deal with uh, all sorts of issues. So from about age of 12, girls can get vaccinated for HPV and they need two doses and then on another note please get vaccinated against covid because that is another thing we have to be fighting because if we don't have our health none of the things that we even care about even matter so so please uh, thank you very much i uh, book yeah she's booking her peps me now please do because it's um I just think if, if it's some, it is something that can be caught early and can be if something can be done about it, please do it. Um, it, it it's no use taking out a lot of us uh, from from the the fights that we have to be fighting and, and the battles that we have to be fighting um, and through our health. Now, yeah, nothing is guaranteed in life, but I'd rather go down as the person that tried. Um, so. I don't, I don't bury my head in the sand. I'd rather know that, you know, okay, I've got a situation to deal with and do something about it than get to a point where there's nothing that can be done about it. So, so please, I, 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 uh, I beg of you. Thank you to all those who, who are contributing to making this world a better place. Um, and sometimes it is just one jab at a time because <laughs> we need to, we need to come back to, 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 we need to go back to a point where we're not just fighting, adapting in businesses, but we're creating jobs because we really need that. Um, and we're not going to be able to, to create jobs if, if the bulk of us are not vaccinated and we can't get back into proper working mode. Um, and so, so it, it, it's got, it's, it's got a, a ripple effect. 
so if you and and I'm that person now because you remember I chose myself as a, an ambassador for vaccinations. <laughs> I did, <laughs> like I do. <laughs> so I, I I everywhere I go, everywhere I go, even when I have staff come and do some things, my first question is, are you vaccinated? Especially men. Men, uh, it turns out, are not getting vaccinated. So. I speak to them, I'm like, why have you not been vaccinated? And some of them tell me the truth. They're like, actually, you know, us men, we, we are scared of needles. We're scared to be injected, but we're not going to tell you that in public. So guys, it's not that bad. It's just, just get it, please, because it is, it is, you, and you can't, it's, it's one of those things, it's like voting. You know, some people were like, nah, I'm not going to vote this year. Who are you spiting? You know, spiting the, 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 the politicians. You're spiting yourself because then you're not using your voice. And, and the voice is actually, your voice is your vote. So pretty much like, you, you, yeah, it's your choice. You can choose, I'm not going to vote. But the truth is that you're not doing anyone any favors. Um, and, and you can't therefore complain if you haven't used your, your, your right to vote to, to have your say. So, so I, I, I treated, you know, pretty much, um, uh, you know, not getting vaccinated just for the sake of it is, is not, um, we need to, we need, we need to understand that the more, the more, the, the more of us get vaccinated, the better things are for our country, the better things are for the world, the better things are for our businesses, for our jobs, for our children, the better we can put food on the table. So if, if you don't think that's something you, you, you want to sign up to, then, then I, I don't know, man. So, so thank you very much for your time. Take good care. Lots of love. I said a lot today, I hope. <laughs> and I appreciate all your comments and, and sharing because sometimes, you know, it's easy for people to think that because I'm dancing and I'm laughing that I don't have challenges in life. Um, and I never, ever want you to follow me because... Um, it be, because I look like my life is like fantastic and perfectly put together. My life is perfect with all its issues. <laughs> and I'm that person who's like, mm, mama. And then on the other hand, I'm like, oh girl, you're killing it. So, <laughs> and I think you should normalize that. It's, that's just, that's just part of life. At least I do. So, um, so it's 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 just understanding that I, I never want you to, to follow me for shoes I wear, car I drive, home I live in. Uh, no. Hopefully it's 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 the spirit with which I live my life because that's that's really what, what matters for me. So so thank you for, for hanging out with me. I know some of you banked meetings and lectures. <laughs> You muted your, your lectures and meetings. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, I'll post it again. It's fine. Uh, I'll save it and, and post it here. So thank you so much for, for, for hanging out with me. Take good care. Namibia, I'm seeing you soon. Uh, Botswana, we'll talk soon. Lesotho, we'll talk soon. <laughs> I'm very excited. And please, if I'm not dancing, stop asking me to dance. Just get up and dance yourself. And you know, uh, also those people who, who, who like to have those opinions, um, just get up and dance, guys. It, it's, a, it's a great mood lifter. Mm. If you're not getting paid, if your job is, is you're not a professional dancer, you don't need to be able to dance. You just get up and move and listen to some music. And, and you'll be amazed at what happens to you. You know, so... It's not, it's not about whether you can dance or not. Just get up and move. Do something. Uplift your spirit because we need that so much. So thank you so, so much. Um, I appreciate your time. I've been keeping Sli waiting, so it's a bit rude, but <laughs> she, she's, she's like I'm a little sister here. The view. I'm <laughs> yeah, so just get up and dance, please. And, 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 um, relieve your pressures and your pain however you wish to relieve them 
uh, hopefully it's healthy habits uh, and please if I'm not dancing don't ask me Amanda when are you dancing because you don't put money in me and then I'm like a robot <laughs> then I'll dance for you okay <laughs> entertain <Yeah>. yourselves <laughs> bye guys take good care bye Amanda <laughs>